One more detail about shells and sending signals. It turns out that when the shell sends a control C or a stop, it doesn't actually send it to just one process. It sends it to a whole group of processes. And we can see that with this example program. Uh, so let's call this uh, fork. So this process, uh, this program, forks twice, so we end up with four processes at the, at the end. Before forking, we set the signal handler to this signal handler. That means that, uh, you know, since a forked process inherits everything about its parent process, then all four of those processes are waiting for control C to just say that they're ignoring the first one. And the point is going to be that the shell, when I build fork.c uh, and run a.out, uh, I forgot to save it. Run a.out then the shell only knows that I started one process a dot out, but control C provokes four ignoring first control C's. That's because the shell actually sends the control C signal to not just the process that it started to a process, but to a process group that it started. And the process group is identified by that first process. So we see four control messages, and that's because the shell sends a kill passes not a process ID, but a negated process ID, where the process ID is doubling as the group ID. The child processes that are created by this fork inherit the group ID of the parent process, so they all receive the signal. The way the shell did that is after it created the main process for a.out, um, when it did a fork, before it did the exec, it used set pgid, and it set the process group of the new process to be the same uh, the new process, to be the same as the process ID itself. Process IDs uh, double as group IDs. Uh, it's just that not every process ID is a group ID. But, um, and typically the way set PG ID is used is actually just with zero and zero because zero stands for the current process. That sets the current process's group to be the same as the current process's ID. If you're implementing a program that wants to run a child process and does not want signals delivered to that child process from a shell, uh, then you can use set PGID. So let's try this this program. Here I have a program that is going to run bin cat eventually with exec VE in a child process. And then it's just going to wait for that child to be done. Uh, it, we do set the sig child handler. So let's call this 9. We set the sig child handler here so that the first eight control C's are ignored and then the process ends. So that's what's going to happen to the main process. Uh, we should see uh, eight control C's before a control C terminates the process. That's not quite what will happen yet, though. Uh, so if we run 9 csapp, uh, and that was compiling it, run it, hit control C once and the whole thing finishes. The reason it completes right away, even though we were supposed to ignore the control C, is because the child process uh, that we created here received the control C. When we use exec VE, it replaces all of the code. And since the signal handler is code that was in our original process, that has to go away. So one of the jobs of exec VE is to reset all the signal handlers back to their default handler. The default control C handler exits the process. But if I uncomment this set PGID, that means that after we create this child process, the child process gets a different group ID. Its own process ID is used as a new group. So that way, when we hit control C, it's not delivered to cat. And that cat keeps running until the main process receives nine control Cs, and then it exits, taking the subprocess with it because, um, well, because the, the standard input ports get closed by the shell. So set PIG uh, lets the bin cat process survive the control C's.